a warm welcome to everyone to the abhyasa's wellness series or the wellness talk i am abita founder of abhyasa i am an it professional turned wellness coach i am a certified yoga instructor and an emotional intelligence coach i conduct specific wellness programs and workshops surrounding women's wellness teens wellness mental and emotional health and yoga for healthy immune and lymphatic system today we have our guest speaker dr krishna prasad he is a scientist and his research areas includes microbiology and biochemistry he has been developing various products for his health care of mankind since 2004 He is founder and chairman of Biogreen Remedies Private Limited. His research has paved way for variety of biomolecular medicines to provide treatment for almost all acute and chronic disorders with minimal or no side effects. One of his major contributions is the unique drug Tetmin which is used to treat cancer patients. He is also an active member of Indo-American Society for Health and Education. He had addressed and participated in many scientific conferences including Bio International in San Francisco. He had developed a solution for diabetic neuropathy and his product was appreciated by the medical profession. the methodology to improve blood circulation from the sole of the feet combined with regeneration of neurons helped not only diabetes but also varicose veins and stroke patients he had been a guest faculty for ministry of new and renewable energy for all government employees and engineering colleges during 1994 to 1998 He has been developing various products for the healthcare of mankind and he invested his money and time in understanding the shortcomings of all streams of medical sciences and developing technology combining the virtues of all streams. Okay. We are very delighted Dr. Krishna Prasad to have you today in Abhyasa's wellness talk. A hearty welcome. Thank you. so this is particularly a cancer awareness talk before we jump on to the topic of cancer a few curious questions as how you discovered the research path so were you very curious from your childhood that you need to take up this path yeah yeah research is something you know it has to be in your blood in your system then only your mind becomes inquisitive and then you start getting into things okay now uh, we will we will talk about what this turmeric does okay what is this turmeric what is this turmeric uh turmeric is a combination of terostilbene terostilbene is an analog of the resveratrol resveratrol had been established as an anti cancer drug but its bio availability is hardly 10 to 15 or sometime not more than 30 percent. So we want to have maximum bio absorbability. So the analog of the resveratrol that is uh, terostilbene was developed. Terostilbene and its uh, potentiality to deal with cancer is very important. And now the question comes: Why terostilbene alone? if you look into the various anti cancer drugs available with us including monoclonal antibodies which are often uh, termed as targeted therapy and uh, so on all these uh, monoclonal antibodies are supposed to develop antibodies towards a virus in the system which may be effective or may not be effective what happens in the chemotherapeutic area right now is um, the chemotherapeutic drugs are all supposed to be lethal drugs and lethal drugs are supposed to uh, hamper the growth of the cell the treatment of the cancer is uh, termed in a single phrase or as a sentence 
that is it should be effective in inhibiting the cell mitosis cell mitosis is cell multiplication of the cancer cell and also it should induce cell apoptosis apoptosis is death of the cell but what happens is rather than being on selective on the cancer cell it uh, works on all the healthy cells so the patient becomes weaker and uh, that's the reason whenever there is a relapse the patient is collapsed and uh, if you look into the various aspects for relapse and the dangers during relapse is one identified is drug adaptability by the cancer uh, if a patient is being administered one method one uh, sort of a chemotherapy drug for a period of one year or one and a half year and sought and thought that he is under remission now and then when there is a, a relapse and if the same drug is administered in him automatically the growth of the cancer will be very rampant and uh, there are certain guidelines issued by national cancer institute maryland which they say uh, how to feed a cancer patient our observation what we have seen is most of the cancer patients when they eat non vegetarian the growth of the cancer cells is uncontrolled so rather than that we uh, we want to work on a different methodology uh, i'm like i'm like uh, telling you the shortcomings in the existing methodologies one is immunosuppressant uh, immunosuppressant also hampers uh, helps in relapse of the cancer cell and drug adaptability will hasten the uh, fatality of the patient so to avoid casualties and if you want to have a proper treatment methodology we have to understand where are the shortcomings shortcomings are in the drug uh, adaptability of the drug by eating non vegetarian which also promotes the growth of the cancer cells and killing the immunity so and even if you go further into detail uh, as the saying goes the devil lies in the detail you get into the details uh, what is the cause root cause of the cancer root cause of the cancer is scientifically if you understand when the mitochondria tries to produce energy for itself it releases a reactive oxygen species these reactive oxygen species once they are released into the body they will get attracted to a tumor and then the tumor will grow and cancer is uh, is uh, calculated estimated like tnm generally uh, if you go to a doctor they will say stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 but scientifically the nomenclature is tnm tumor node and metastatic condition so what happens is when the tumor grows it passes through lymphatic zone that is lymph nodes lymphatic zone is uh, supra clavicular area then uh, axillary lymph nodes then peritoneal lymph nodes so these are the areas where the nodes will come out and then uh, the proliferation of the disease is rampant and it starts getting into the other organs and spoils so many organs so if you understand this uh, total methodology how this cancer comes in and all these things the origin of cancer is scientifically if you are having uh, mitochondria producing so much of ros so ros the reactive oxygen species are often cleansed by antioxidants the antioxidants are often flavonoids and uh, these flavonoids uh, like uh, if people they take uh, good amount of black tea green tea with flavonoids the flavonoids will help in enhancing the capabilities of the t2 cells and these t2 cells will enable the scavenging of the free radicals in the body so ultimately what we want we don't want any free radical presence in the body and it has to be cleansed properly so this is an aspect where the prevention has to be done and uh, we find uh, the shortcomings from the nci maryland is consumption of non vegetarian because they feel that the patient is subjected to chemotherapy radiotherapy and the patient is uh, losing weight and uh, uh, is uh, underweight and undernourished so proper nourishment may give the 
required energy. But this nourishment of the non-vegetarian, we have observed in many cases that it enables proliferation of the cancer cells, enhancement of the cancer cells. So what our pathology is, we simultaneously increase the immunity of the patient. We increase the lactobacillus content. We increase the immunity of the patient by processing the food as vitamins and the toxins which are present in the body has to be released out. And with the presence of more vitamins and minerals in the food, when they occupy various parts and the toxins are reduced. So it helps in easier treatment. Treatment of cancer is not a joke and uh, it has to be multi-pronged strategy has to be taken and killing of the cells like cell apoptosis and inhibiting the cell mitosis must also be selective. It should not be all the cells. So that's where terostilbene is proven to be selective. It is selective in killing only cancer cells, inhibiting the growth of cancer cells. It does not hamper the healthy cells. So this is an added advantage. So along with uh, terostilbene, we have a combination of various herbs uh, which contain um, molecules like bisaboline and uh, curcuminoids. So, so many molecules, allicin. So all these uh, molecules, they're identified for each cancer uh, by various scientists. See, identification of these molecules is uh, not uh, alone done by me. It is done by so many scientists. Even uh, efficacy of uh, terostilbene is done by somebody else. Uh, Reservatrol is identified by somebody else. What lies with me is, I know the methodology of extraction as an industrial chemical man, chemistry man. I do extraction of the active biomolecule from the plant kingdom. I don't touch the synthetic material. We don't use any synthetic material, even for stabilization also. So we extract the biomolecules from the plant kingdom, and then we use them in combinations uh, to treat various cancers. Um, like, you know, we have gone to the extent of understanding the relapse methodology by uh, understanding the genome sequencing. Uh, one of the case uh, we have submitted to the uh, genome lab and we got the analysis done for a breast cancer where we feel that uh, we want to achieve 100% success rate. So because, you know, breast cancer is one of the very important uh, issue as far as India is concerned. In India, as on date, there are 20 lakh cases of breast cancer registered. And uh, we feel uh, there is a uh, every year registry of uh, in the National Cancer Registry, maybe approximately around two to three lakh cases every year, there is an increase in the cases. So when that is a circumstance, we you are more focused on the uh, breast and prostate. And uh, these are all both are hormonal. And uh, I can say we have uh, really, we have uh, remarkable achievement in addressing both the hormonal cancers, male hormone and as well as the female hormone. Uh, we have success stories here where uh, people are 100% uh, cured, remission is perfect, and uh, years have passed without any other complications. So under that circumstances, we wanted to study their genome profiling so once we have understood the DNA and RNA profiling is done, the presence of oncogene in a breast cancer case was very, very insignificant. This establishes that our treatment methodology is helpful in not only uh, inhibiting the cancer cells and uh, promoting the cell apoptosis of the cancer cell, but also playing and rectifying the oncogene presence. That means the hormonal factors which influence the uh, production of the cancer cell and the tumor are also being uh, addressed. So these are the issues we did. And I feel uh, one has to be very careful in um, doing a daily massage, yoga, where you need to do breathing exercise. You need to do cleaning of the lymphatic zone. Cleansing the lymphatic zone is very essential because any of the dirt and any of these wastes, any of the toxins in the body are stocked in the lymphatic zones. That's why some of the people, they get a pain in the armpit 
armpit, groin, and this is the supraclavicular area. These are the areas where proper cleansing during the uh, day, it, five minutes, 10 minutes, if a person does it regularly, probably he'll be, he or she will be in a position to see that toxins don't play a vital role in uh, getting into a disease called cancer. Apart from this, if you study some of the uh, case studies, success stories, like uh, Louis Hay of US, She's a lady, she's a cancer survivor. She survived for more than 20 years. And uh, her uh, understanding about the origin of the cancer is the psychosomatic disorder, the psychological disorder of the cancer patient is victim or a guilt psychology. This guilt or a victim psychology, uh, if I were to explain, she talks from the meditation point of view and the psychological point of view, and if I have to correlate that to scientific reasoning, I understand that guilt and victim psychologies will hamper the immunity of the patient. And the, when the immunity of the patient is uh, subject is hampered, the cleansing and scavenging of the free radicals is not done properly. Hence, the potentiality to growth uh, of tumor is uh, high. So one has to keep oneself in a proper fit of psychological fitness and then uh, eating habits, and then cleansing habits. I think these things can help us really in uh, preventing the cancer. And usage of flavonoids is a uh, good amount of usage of flavonoids will help in uh, cleansing and scavenging the free radicals. I hope I am uh, clear uh, in explaining the disease and disease mitigation strategies. Now any questions, please. So, Doctor, yeah, you explain now about the breast cancer and the mitigation strategies. Just uh, now, as you said, the breast cancer is quite a lot in numbers when compared to past 20 to 30 years. And again, it does not come over the, in a very short period of time. So what do you think is the time that it takes generally for a person uh, from the onset condition to a cancer condition? Does it change from person to person? or suddenly even in a short period of six months also, one can get into the stage of cancer? See, getting into state of cancer is uh, within, you see, you need to get regular checkups is very important. For breast cancer, mammogram checkup is there, which helps you understand uh, any changes in the breast. The mammogram is a very good cancer screening methodology. So it has to be done regularly once in a quarter, once in six months. Any, see, cancer case in the stage one, that is in the tumor level, it can be addressed and it can be sorted out. But if it goes to lymphatic node and then to the metastatic condition, it's a little complicated and difficult. Okay. And you say you have been using the bio remedies and what exactly to the audience here to understand what are the biomedical remedies that you use. I understand that you use the natural uh, leaves or herbs or anything, combining it with biomedical technology. Yeah, as I told you, if you look into the studies done across the globe, people find there are very, uh, compared to the global uh, statistics of 0.3% anywhere in any country of the population is affected with cancer. Whereas in France, it is little less. The reason for less incidence, low incidence of cancer in France was uh, sought to be consumption of the red wine. Red wine cons consists of comprises reservitrol. Reservitrol is a chemical uh, of the grapes. So that is a regular consumption. But when you have to use it as a medicine, it may not be effective because we are using medicine for cancer affected patient not for uh, avoiding cancer. So then uh, I need to have a better absorbability. I need to construct the reservatrol. So in a synthetic way, rather than constructing reservatrol in a synthetic way, we have gone to the analog of the reservatrol because the reservatrol's uh, body absorbability is also less. It's not beyond 30%. So we want to have better bioabsorbability of the anti-cancer drug. So we developed a pterostilpine, which is the same chemical formula analog, 
same amounts of carbon, hydro hydrogen, and all those things are there. But it is an analog of resveratrol with more bioabsorbability, and uh, we extract it from the uh, Pterocarpus sandalwood. That is a red sandalwood. So when people go through the uh, chemotherapy, can they again come and take these biomedicines hand in hand? Or when you take these biomedicines, bio remedies, they need not go for allopathic uh, medication at all, and they can totally get healed with. Yeah, when when we when we are talking about uh, termin, we are talking it as a standalone treatment. Okay. So it is a, it is effective as a standalone treatment, but what happens it is uh, is in some of the cases where uh, we get a case of breast cancer, we have a medication termin, woman AM PM. That is one in the morning, one in the evening. These two are different drugs. It has to be consumed uh, orally, and uh, we are sure within six months to one year the disease is out of the body, and the it goes to the level of hormonal uh, adjustments, pathway of the estrogen pathway rectification, and as well as oncogene rectification. But what happens is sometimes patients they get um, hyper and they feel that they need to go for a chemotherapy because. Uh, maybe uh, you see our psychology is um, we feel uh, a western drug is more effective or uh, costlier drug is more effective so many aspects uh, are working on a human brain along with the uh, the social influencing factors so with all these things we also suggest patients that you can use ours as a uh, adjuvant also, um, by which what happens? Your chemotherapy can be delayed. See the intervals of the chemotherapy, the cycles can be delayed. So you have more time for that. But uh, we are quite effective as a standalone treatment. We don't, uh, if somebody uses together, we don't mind. Okay. We don't say that they interact with each other and cause some danger to the body. Okay. So being a holistic wellness coach, even when I coach my clients, the psychology aspect is something that I also touch base upon more than the physical and other changes because the uh, emotions you have with regards particularly cancer, when you hear about cancer to your family members or to anyone else, it's generally the fear, anxiety, and the treatment that is involved, the pain that is involved really disturbs people. Yeah. But what what is that you suggest for the people to have a positive mindset in the view that, yeah, it's deadly, but there is a hope that if you change the lifestyle, you can still combat it with a positive attitude. And the positive attitude helps a lot. in You can just win it. You talk about winning over the disease, not managing the disease. Okay. So if you develop a positive attitude, if you have right eating habits, right exercises, right orientation of the mind, you can win over the disease. I have sufficient case studies where prostate cancer cases, which were given up, uh, now is very happy. He doesn't use our medication also. He's wandering in US along with his children uh, some four or five years back. Like this, we have wandered up and, uh, I can claim 100% success rate in prostate and uh, breast as both are hormonal and we are able to deal with the hormonal interference in producing the cancer cells. Okay. So what's your uh, experience like when people come to you with a double state of mind or not a total conviction, but as just to try out? They come with double state of mind. See, initially we used to get uh, patients only after uh, the conventional therapy is exhausted. After exhausting all the methodologies of the conventional therapy, the conventional therapist uh, himself would uh, suggest, I can do nothing now. If there is somebody, there is somebody at the corner of the street who can go and talk to him. He may help you out. So I used to welcome. You see, why I used to welcome is, uh, we are here to help people. 
we are not here to fight wars so we accepted all the given up cases where uh, you see the pathetic part of the the profession is many of the doctors they start suggesting that your life span is one week 10 days which may not be true because i don't think any one of us have the capabilities in uh, depicting and deciding the life span of anybody it is not in our hands most of the cases in the cancer uh, what happens why patient dies is because of the heart failure excessive usage of drug hampers the functioning of the heart cardiac myopathy myocarditis myocarditis leads to heart failure reduction in the ejection fraction and then death of the patient okay so you have answered pretty much the topics on what is cancer and what are the ways to mitigate it or prevent it and how your bio remedies helps people in getting it cured particularly the hormonal things like the breast cancer and the prostate cancer and yes. to all the viewers here uh, abhyasa as a part of offering the yoga programs with the significance of this immunity and lymphatic system we do conduct workshops to teach how to exercise and how to keep your lymphatic system healthy so that the drain happens and always prevention is better than cure and i really yes. saw your quote in your website as well doctor that healthcare is not about treating the diseases it's about preventing them we also go with the same kind of values and now i have allowed you to unmute if the viewers here have any questions you can unmute and ask Hi, Abita. Hi. This is Bina here. Yeah, um, Bina. Hello, doctor. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to check. Um, so if one is in remission, mm. what steps do we take? Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm a... Uh, um i have been in remission for the past 5 years um and uh, i am still on tamoxifen is it required uh, what steps do we take to uh, to stop it eat, <laughs> yeah you no know, no eat more vegetables don't get yeah. into non, non vegetarian food and then uh, uh, try to use more spices instead of red okay. chili okay when you use more spices the spices they secrete poly aromatic carbons and then they kill the uh, other poly aromatic carbons which may be sticking to your gastrum or colon and develop difficulties so spices will ease out all those things and then mm -hmm. uh, laugh a lot enjoy your life yeah. don't think that you are under remission and uh, this pretty fellow will come back to you uh, tell him goodbye perfect thank you so much <laughs> so doctor when you told about spices in specific there are any spices that we could suggest to the viewers i like cinnamon garlic ginger can they use pepper yeah pepper okay uh, nutmeg okay so if you can use all these things a little bit uh, as a whole spices while cooking and remove them what happens is the poly aromatic uh, aromatic carbon cycle is complete and it uh, sees that the digestion is done and uh, nothing sticks to your uh, gastrum or duodenum or the intestine thank you doctor thank you anyone else want to ask questions i had few questions in the question here one of them had asked what is the re reason for the increasing rate of cancers in the current period you are eating uh, compromised food by excessive usage of fertilizer and pesticides so the damage is your immunity and when you don't have immunity to uh, cleanse these 
uh, free radicals and the uh, reactive oxygen species, you are susceptible to get into cancer. And there's a reason it is, there's a reason it is rampant now. One of the viewer has asked, what is the impact of lack of sleep on these conditions? Yes, lack of sleep also will uh, reduce the immunity. Eat a lot of curds, lactobacillus, probiotics, have good sleep, enjoy life. Don't get into dirty psychic problem of guilt or victim. Victim is a crime by somebody else. Guilt is a crime by yourself. In both the cases, do an exercise of forgiveness and seek forgiveness. You forgive people and then you seek forgiveness. So you come out of that guilt psychology, come out of that victim psychology. You have the globe in front of you, fight it out. It's not impossible to fight out. Yeah, very well said. Any others can come up with your questions? Doctor is here to give his valuable answers. You're allowed to unmute now, so you can unmute and ask the questions. I think, can we call it a day? <laughs> I think everyone are silent. Few of them had asked the questions in the questionnaire, which I actually asked you. And they were asking, what are the common symptoms to identify that a person will get cancer or what are the common conditions or symptoms to identify a cancer? Your food habits, smoking, cigarettes will impact the lung. Alcohol will impact the liver and then serene lifestyle will uh, impact the pancreas. So excessive caffeine will impact the brain. So try to have a balanced life with good food. Uh, I don't say for a non-cancerous patient, you eat non-vegetarian, but in a healthy way. Use spices. Don't get into the processed meat. Try to get into the uh, cooking, boiling with all spices. When you are doing barbecue, add spices. And then uh, good heating habits. Bone soup is also very good. Try to get into vegetable proteins with a lot of soya bean and all these things. So last call, anyone have any questions? So doctor, finally, the viewers in India, if they have to reach out for any kind of medication to the BioGreen remedies, how can they reach out to you through your website or? Yeah, through our website or call center number, otherwise they can call me directly. I will put them to our pharmacy and other doctors. Okay. Are telephonic so, things available or do you need yeah, to call yeah, with yeah, the yeah, patient? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Telephonic thing is available. Many patients, see, they are, uh, many patients come to me when they are immobile at okay. home. We treat them also. Okay. See, for us, for us, the patient is very important. If I can generate a smile on somebody's face, even for a while, I feel my work, life is worthwhile. Okay. So if anyone wants to uh, take note, it is BioGreen Remedies, if you are interested. And can they, can contact, they, they can contact you 
and through yeah. you also i can get the queries and we can interact yes we have mode of communication so much of mode of communication is developed today nothing is impossible we can courier medicines to everywhere in the world hmm. we send medicines to singapore and uh, us also we are presently treating a liver cancer in us we treated a brain cancer in us so yes uh, i just chatted my website better you with abhyasa so if you anyone are interested in reaching out for any kind of medication or are interested to sign up for the program or the workshop on the lymphatic system you are welcome to ask your queries and get in contact with me so thank you very much doctor for spending your valuable time evening giving us thank a you. good insights thank you thank you for organizing this meet no we are indeed grateful that you gave time to really make understand that you can always win over the condition it's not the end thank you we can win over yeah. okay okay thank you bye bye wish good you, night wish you all the best thank you everyone good luck to everybody thank you thank you